Okay, welcome back to members of 121 Community Church in Grapevine, Texas, in our ongoing study in the book of uh, Galatians, using the commentary by Sproul. We're going to look at 114 through 17 and continue in Paul's apostolic defense. Let's go to block one and take a look at the text. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people, so extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born, and who called me by his grace, was pleased to reveal his son to me, in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles, I did not immediately consult with anyone, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me. But I went away into Arabia, and then I returned again to Damascus. So again, Paul's talking about his uh, apocalypse of Damascus. Let's go to block two and take a look at Martin Luther's commentary. And he talks about himself here. Before I was enlightened by the gospel, I was zealous for the papal laws and the uh, tradition of the fathers. I honored the Pope as a matter of conscience. But after conversion, Paul went into Arabia without consulting a single person. We all come to knowledge of truth by the kindness of God. I really like that statement by Martin Luther. Listen to that. We all come to knowledge of truth by the kindness of God. The agape of God. I really like that. As a monk, my righteousness was filthy, a filthy puddle. God granted unto Paul knowledge of salvation. Paul says even prior to birth, God ordained him to be an apostolos. Paul was called by God's grace alone. Paul proclaimed a righteousness of faith, not works. A righteousness of faith, not works. Now take a look at R.C. Sproul. God was setting Paul apart even before he was born. Now that's true to the Greek there. Paul was educated, educated in the rabbinic tradition at the uh, school led by Gamaliel. Paul understood his message as from God himself. With absolute authority, he did not import the Jerusalem gospel. That's important to understand there. Because uh, we'll discuss this, but you know, Jerusalem didn't really, uh, they needed the Jerusalem council. It wasn't just for Paul to be commissioned to minister to Gentiles. The Jerusalem church needed to understand that Gentiles were a part of God's covenant and that the promise was to all who believe in Christ. The Jerusalem needed that as well. The Jerusalem gospel was tainted with uh, Judaic practices and uh, they needed the testimony of Simon Peter and the testimony of Paul at the Jerusalem Council to get their theology right. To get their theology right. It wasn't just to commission Paul. The Jerusalem Council needed was needed to get Jerusalem theology right. And even Simon Peter testified at the Jerusalem Council that uh, salvation is for all who have faith in Christ, including Gentiles. So it's important that uh, we recognize that Paul did not import a uh, tainted Jerusalem gospel. Instead, he went into Arabia for what? For prayer and meditation. After the apocalypse of Damascus, Paul went into Arabia for prayer and for meditation, for prayer and uh, meditation. A lot of people think that, uh, a lot of scholars think he went into uh, Petra, uh, but uh, he could have gone to uh, God's holy mountain as well for prayer and meditation. I just think he went there for prayer and meditation, period. Wherever he went, it was to contemplate this dramatic apocalypse he just went through. Very important commentary by uh, Luther and by Sproul. And uh, Luther even was a little bit confessional in his commentary because uh, he went through an apocalypse that uh, 
it led to the uh, Reformation. So he gave, gave a little bit of a personal testimony there in his commentary. I like what Martin Luther had to say. We're going to look at the Greek text now, and uh, again, it's extremely important to examine the original Greek. The Lord didn't intend for the scriptures to be preserved in Greek by accident. It's a very descriptive language, and uh, it serves us to genuinely dig into the Greek. Let's go to block 3, verse 15. I look at 15, 16, and 17 as having significant Greek content. In 15, uh, we have ha aphorisas me from aphorizo to set apart. So there's where uh, Sproul was quoting the Greek in his commentary. God set Paul apart from ministry even before birth. God set Paul apart from ministry as an apostolos, even from the womb. Then we read uh, that he was kaleo dia charitas. He was called by grace. Paul was called by grace, not because of any merit. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was studied under Gamaliel. He was uh, felt like he was a righteous person. But after uh, Conversion realized that his righteousness was as filthy rags. And he was called by grace. That's his feeling. He was called by grace. Paul was called by grace alone for faith alone in Christ alone. Did you get that? Paul was called by grace alone for faith alone in Christ alone. But he was set apart before birth, called by grace. And then 16. This is important in 16. Apocalypsi, Tan, Huion, and Amoy. In order to reveal his son in me. Now, pay attention to that. It is en Amoy. It's sub subjectivity is being emphasized here. But let me explain something here. The apocalypse of Damascus was an objective historical event. It knocked Paul to the ground, left him blinded and unable to eat or to drink. The same symptoms that you have as a, when you have a massive stroke. Trust me, I've had a massive stroke. I was blind. I couldn't eat. I couldn't drink. Uh, I could barely see. I mean, it was like looking through a glass of uh, filmy milk. So when I say blind, I mean I could see like big blobs, but uh, I couldn't eat, I couldn't drink, I could barely see, technically blind. So these symptoms remind me of a massive stroke. But what it tells us is that the apocalypse of Damascus was an objective historical event, okay? Real objective historical event. But it was also an inward subjective event where revelation took place within. And uh, Paul declares that. He says, Christ was revealed in me. How did Mary Magdalene recognize the, rec recognize the resurrected Christ? It was revealed in her at the tomb. Initially, she didn't know. Any Unveiling of truth is an objective historical event, and it is also an internal subjective revealing. It is objective historical event and internal revelatory unveiling. Subjective revelatory unveiling. And so it's important to note the Greek there. Apocalypsi. He calls it an apocalypse again. Apocalypse tan huion and amoy. To reveal or to unveil his son in me. It's an inward subjective event as well as an objective historical event. Why did he go through this apocalypse? Hina evangelizomai autan. 
that I might preach him, that I might preach the person of Christ. When we proclaim the truth, what do we proclaim? We proclaim him. We proclaim the person of Christ. Truth is a person. Truth is the person of Christ. It's his life, his ministry, his teaching, his death, his resurrection, his ascension. It's everything. We proclaim Christ. We teach Christ. This channel exists on YouTube to proclaim and teach Christ. Paul went through an apocalypse of Damascus. Hina evangelizomai autan, that I might preach him, that I might preach him. And then he says, uh, and then I went away into Arabia, and he went into Arabia after conversion for prayer and meditation. Because this is a dramatic 180 degree turn in Paul's life from Saul to Paul. What did he do? He re went on retreat. He went to Arabia for prayer and meditation before he went back to Damascus, before he went to Jerusalem. First, he went into Arabia for prayer and meditation. It's critical that we understand that uh, how important prayer and meditation played a key role in Paul's conversion. Extremely important role. After the apocalypse of Damascus, Paul immediately went into Arabia for prayer and meditation. Critically important to understand that. And uh, let's take a look at the text again in block one. And I was advancing in Judaism beyond many of my own age among my people. So extremely zealous was I for the traditions of my fathers. But when he who had set me apart before I was born and who had called me by his grace was pleased to reveal his son in me, not to me, that should be in me, was pleased to reveal his son in me in order that I might preach him among the Gentiles. I did not immediately consult with anyone, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to those who were apostles before me, but I went away into Arabia, then returned to Damascus. Very critically important scriptures there. Uh, it's critical to understand what we're talking about here. If you look at the Greek, verse 15, Paul says, I was aphorizo, I was set apart, even before my birth, I was set apart to be an apostle. He says, I was set apart to be an apostle. And then he says, uh, verse 16, Apocalypsi tan huion en emoi. Apocalypsi tan huion en emoi. To reveal his son in me. Why did God put me through an apocalypse in order to reveal his son in me? En emoi. In me. Yes, it was an objective historical apocalypse event. Yes, it was also an subjective inward revelatory unveiling. That's going to wrap up 1, 14 through 6, uh, 17. Next time we'll look at uh, 1, 18 through 21. We will continue in apostolic defense next time. That wraps up a beautiful lesson on uh, the continued examination of the apocalypse of Damascus and the conversion of Saul to become the Apostle Paul.